Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat petang kepada semua hadirin hadirin sekalian. Um, izinkan kami bertutur dalam dui bahasa ya, eh, tuan-puan. We will be having this session today both in Malay and English uh, so that we can really dive into the topics and what would actually help. As you all know, today we are here to discuss this panel, latihan vocational membawa kepada keboleh pasaran yang tinggi. So Tuan Puan, we are here to talk about marketability of vocational skills. Together with me, my name is Amir Isham bin Abdul Rahim. I am the director from I Am Possible Solutions, a training and consulting company. Previously, I was with uh, Prime Minister's Department uh, Pemandu Agency overseeing human capital development. Together with me are my panelists, Miss, uh, Miss, Nadia, Miss Nadia Subramaniam from Asia Foundation. She is our basically our shipping expert. Her background is a logistician in charge of maritime and cargo specialists. She then shifted to TVET education teaching uh, supply chain management. Today, she is with the Asia Foundation, who is undertaking a TVET study on the landscape of TVET in Malaysia. Um, the next to her is Mr. Jeff, is Mr. Jeff San, Sandu, who is the head of 42KL, Kumpulan Sunway Education Group, which is a coding school that is disrupting the way you teach coding. And the next to her is Malaysia's first unicorn, a representative from Malaysia's first unicorn, Kasem Puan, Sal, Puan Salwani, Puan, from Puan Salwani. She is the regional head for Kasem's uh, TVET education program, as well as the principal for Kasem Academy. So we have very much a very interesting panel lineup for you guys. Memang tuan-tuan, puan-puan, ini merupakan panel yang banyak-banyak pengalaman yang kami harap dapat mencungkil sedikit topik uh, topik kita pada hari ini. What can you do? Where do you start? We're made to understand that bulk of the people who are present here are just starting out. Meaning to say you are either in entry level or you're trying to figure out whether TVET is for you. And that's why pada hari ini kita akan berbincang daripada aspek how do we make sure you position yourself to get those advantages that TVET can provide. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into it. I think the first question is uh, for Miss Nadia. So Miss Nadia, I think maybe for you since you are our TVET expert, beliau merupakan pakar TVET kita tengah melakukan study ni kan? So... Can you maybe set the scene for us? Um, what is the bigger picture findings of your study so far in terms of job opportunities, career prospect, sustainability in the TVET world if you choose the TVET route? So what is, apakah uh, prospect kerjaya untuk kita semua jikalau kita memasuki arena TVET, mengambil kemahiran TVET uh, di Malaysia? Okay, thank you. Um, so generally, I think the, the study found that um, there is a, a, a lot of uh, positivity in Malaysian uh, TVET landscape, but at the same time, there are uh, some avenues where we could improve, in, especially in terms of the niche courses. I think there's a lot of demand for courses in the high-tech TVET industries, and this is um, something that we need to get students to be a little bit more... Um, students to be a little bit more interested to joining these sectors. So how can we attract students to this high-tech event? At the same time, one of the findings of the study is that employers right now, they're not only looking at the hard skills, they're also looking at the soft skills and the auxiliary skills. So, um, majikan-majikan sekarang uh, bukan sahaja uh, melihat untuk skill-skill keras, right? The hard skills, tetapi juga the soft skills, seperti um, kolaborasi. So, they are looking at collaboration, they are looking at digital skills, digital literacy um, as part of uh, a package of what you what you offer to the employer. Yeah. Hmm. So, that's interesting. So, basically, what we're saying is that TVET is quite wide and and memang there is many routes you can go through which is interestingly enough where we have very different backgrounds of our panel today so for example jeff is basically within the digital tvet space so to speak and kasem misawani is within the automotive sector so maybe very quickly uh, jeff could you maybe start off and explain to us a little bit about uh, 42kl what is it that you're trying to do and how does that correlate with tvet yeah, thanks. Um, 
before I sort of like answer that question, I just want to see uh, uh, a raise of hands or tolong angkat tangan uh, siapa yang dekat sini uh, mahir dalam bidang coding, computer science. Kalau mahir dalam bidang computer science, boleh tolong angkat tangan. So, as we can see, and I'm sure kalau kita buat test yang ni dekat bawah, banyak orang pun sama juga kan? Tak banyak yang boleh angkat tangan yang cakap saya mahir dalam bidang computer science atau uh, bidang coding. Um, so, 42 uh, Kuala Lumpur uh, dalam uh, dalam group Sunway Education Group sebenarnya adalah uh, coding uh, school yang berasal dari France. Uh, dia lahir dalam tahun 2013. Kemudian, uh, we expanded di Silicon Valley uh, tahun 2016. And lepas tu dalam tahun 2019, uh, kita orang dari Sunway Education Group, um, we did a survey uh, dalam market. Tengok macam mana dalam Sunway Education Group ada bidang faculty computer science. Kenapa banyak lagi company-company yang cakap mereka tak ada talent yang mahir dan boleh uh, menolong mereka uh, achieve status macam custom, unicorn. kan? Uh, and then recently pun kita lihat dari uh, Minister Mosti pun cakap kita Malaysia nak jadi hub untuk unicorn. Tetapi dia punya, I guess the core for any unicorn company ialah talent. Talent yang mahir untuk apply learning yang dalam bidang computer science, dalam you know bidang coding, boleh di, um, uh, you can be applied into many different areas, into many different sectors of the business itself. So that's where we started the journey, and for us, what we want is to to allow anyone to have the opportunity to explore. Sesiapa saja, asalkan 18 umur dan ke atas, dan mereka ada passion dan desire untuk belajar dalam bidang coding. And it's free, it's percuma, right? So bidang dia satu tahun. Kalau, you know, dia, dia ada test sendiri, so that's an online test yang you kena buat. And then there is a bootcamp uh, dalam satu bulan. Selepas you pass bootcamp ini, there is a curriculum untuk 12 bulan, satu tahun, untuk uh, belajar the foundations yang boleh um, put you in companies like Kasem uh, dan, you know, banyak lagi companies yang we work with, right? So for us, is actually to open up the world of coding or computer science to more people because we believe that coding is actually a necessary language. Our job is not to grad, you know, to have a thousand more computer science students, you know, uh, it, uh, a thousand more uh, full stack engineers, uh, computer science, data science. We're not looking for that, but we are giving you the skills that can be essential to any jobs that you venture into. We've got students in medical, accountancy, law, you know, there's so many, right? So imagine coding is just macam bahasa Inggris, bahasa Melayu, you know, it's just another language. So that's basically a premise of, you know, what 42 does and stuff. So, yeah. so basically you're offering some of Kalau saya kaitkan kepada apa Puan Nadia sebut, you're offering some of these high-level TVET skills that are very much in demand by the industry. Yeah. Benda yang memang industri memerlukan, kerajaan pun sekarang sedang menggalakkan daripada segi policy dan segi planning. And this is something that you can maybe grasp the opportunity of. Yeah. So moving on to Cik Salwani, if you can just give a bit of introduction to Kasem Puan Salwani, and yeah. how is it you're disrupting the TVET space? Yeah, hello all. Okay, so yeah. Kalau kita bercakap pasal Kasem kan, okay, uh, Kasem actually just announced uh, to be as a one, uh, apa kita panggil, one billion US uh, dollar value, okay, actually for this year. So, ya, yeah, melihat kepada perkembangan, kalau cik-cik pun uh, yang ada kat sini, saya rasa kalau pergi ke sebelah Pucong, okay, sebelah uh, Wansa Maju, sebelah Seri Kembangan, akan nampak Kasem, okay, we are in the yellow, okay, colour uh, kuning, okay, and then kalau dengar dekat radio pun, uh, asyik apa, uh, diiklankan lah Kasem, beep beep, okay, so so this one that the one things lah. So, uh, bila kita melihat kepada perkembangan, eh, uh, uh, Kasem, uh, di mana uh, kita punya apa kita panggil uh, business nature kita adalah uh, menjual dan juga membeli kenderaan terpakai okey melalui aplikasi lah 
Uh, so uh, dari segi di situ okey uh, bila kata uh, encik-encik yang ada kat sini uh, uh, mahu menjual kenderaan okey jadi bila pergi ke kasam kami akan menjalani uh, checking ataupun kita panggil sebagai 175 checkpoint okey so this is ada process lah okey untuk menjual kenderaan kepada kasam jadi untuk melakukan uh, special task ataupun skill uh, yang di mana 175 inspector of course okey kita perlukan pekerja yang berkemahiran tinggi lah Uh, jadi pada tahun 2020 okey melalui uh, pengasas uh, bersama Kasem iaitu Mr uh, Jun Tiu oh, okey uh, di mana okey kita mengorak langkah untuk uh, membangunkan okey uh, dasar pendidikan teknik dan vocational di Malaysia lah dengan penubuhannya Kasem Academy. Uh, jadi specialnya ya uh, Cik Amir okey dan panel-panel dan juga tuan-tuan dekat sini specialnya Kasem Academy ni actually kami melatih okey sendiri pekerja kami di mana sesiapa yang mohon untuk uh, uh, dilatih di Kasam Academy akan diberi pekerjaan. Okey maksudnya uh, 100% job guarantee with Kasam Seram Rahat. Okey so uh, jadi di situlah okay, uh, uh, kita melihatlah uh, di mana uh, begitu tingginya keperluan uh, pekerja uh, dalam bidang kemahiran lah. Okay? On that note yeah. Puan Sawani, hmm. just nak tanya lah hmm. kenapa Kasam decided saya perlukan Academy sendiri? Are yeah. you not getting what you need from the current traditional universities? Ya, yeah, so... okay. Actually, bila kita tengok ah, Cik Amir perkembangan Kasem uh, daripada satu tahun ke satu tahun, okay, daripada bermulanya kita di Kelana Jaya sahaja dan dalam masa beberapa tahun, sekarang ni inspection centre sahaja kita dah uh, dah di seluruh Malaysia. Okay? Di KV sahaja, Klang Valley ataupun di area KL, kita sudah ada lebih kurang uh, 30 ke 40 inspection uh, centre. Okay? Di mana di situ kita perlukan uh, apa kita panggil tenaga kemahiran tinggi yang sangat uh, banyak lah. Okey, jadi dinamik yang di sini, okey, di mana kami mendalami kita apa kita panggil framework ataupun kaedah pembelajaran latihan secara kemahiran, di mana pusat latihan Kasem Academy ini kami berlandaskan SLDN, okey, di mana berbezanya kami di antara dengan pusat latihan lain adalah program kami dilatih di Academy secara teoritikal hanya tiga bulan sahaja, okey. Selepas itu, para pelatih akan dihantar ke pusat latihan kami, uh, 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 sorry, akan dihantar ke pusat inspection kami, okay, di mana akan menjalani latihan pekerjaan yang sebenar. Okay, selama 9 bulan. Okay, so jumlah latihan adalah 12 bulan lah. Jadi ini yang kita lihat kepada uh, dasar latihan daripada Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran lah. Because kita Kasam Akademi adalah uh, di bawah akreditasi uh, oleh Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran lah. Ministry of uh, Human Resources. Uh, jadi kita lihat kepada sistem SLDN. Okay, sistem latihan dual national. Okay, yang sangat baik lah. So dapat menampol lah perkembangan kasam yang seterusnya. Di mana kalau kita tengok dekat sini sekarang ni demografik kita punya kaki tangan adalah sebanyak 2,500. Dan akan datang akan lebih bertambah lah. Ha, jadi keperluan pekerja kemahiran tu adalah sangat penting dan sangat tinggi sekarang di, di kasam. Ya. Ha, dia begitulah selaras dengan penubuhan kasam di mana visi dan misi kami adalah ingin melahirkan dan menyediakan pekerja berkemahiran tinggi. So that's interesting sebab apa yang saya dengar daripada Cik Sawani punya jawapan is that the need was so great from your industry daripada syarikat Puan sendiri kita tak akan tunggu we will do ourselves and this is where I find very interesting because daripada panel kita Tuan Puan you can see ada automotive background you ada coding you have shipping so for me this makes it sound as though TVET is very wide uh, maybe Miss Nadia boleh tak dalam Miss Nadia kupas sedikit I think maybe just to help set the context because I think a lot of us always hear TVET, TVET. But what actually is TVET? What would fall under the skills of TVET? Apakah kemahiran-kemahiran TVET? And how do we actually break this down? Because there are people talking about retail as TVET. There are people talking about coding as TVET. Automotive. What exactly, how exactly do we make sense of the TVET pathways? Um, so, kalau kita tengok bidang TVET, right? And the word uh, vocational there, very aligned to job seeking. Jadi, kalau kita fikirkan TVET, it's about uh, the alignment to a particular job or particular industry. Dan kalau kita kata yang di sini kita boleh li li lihat yang TVET tu uh, adalah sangat luas, sebenarnya TVET lagi luas daripada itu. Sebab kalau kita fikirkan a floristry, so uh, gubahan bunga, that is also TVET. Uh, untuk uh, to cut hair, to, to do plumbing and weld welding, this is also TVET. So, 
I think the idea that we, when we think about TVET, we need to understand that the difference between TVET and an academic education is that for an academic education, you don't know for sure, tak pasti di mana anda akan pergi lepas latihan tersebut. Tetapi untuk bidang TVET, you you are already sure that this is what you want to do. Jadi, if you join Kasem Academy, you not only are you sure the industry, you are also sure the company that you're going to join. So, if you want that kind of, if you're sure, kalau anda pasti dan anda hendak um, menceburi bidang tersebut, TVET is your fastest way there. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. So, it really memang nampak that TVET seems to be lebih kepada orang yang very certain what they're going to do. Nilah apa yang nak buat. I memang tak minat belajar. I tak nak baca buku. I tak nak buat law. You know, memang I benci. I, nak, I memang minat kereta. I nak buat automotive, for example. But that being said, saya rasa speaking from experience, my experience, my cousin's experience, kebanyakan pelajar hari ini, I think we don't know where we are. We don't know what we want to do. And more often than not, kita sedang diberitahu, okay, masuk, jadilah doktor, jadilah lawyer, jadilah engineer, be the accountant. You know, our traditional Asian family, safe jobs. What Sell TVET to me. I think this is open to all three of you, whoever yeah. wants to talk about it. Why should I consider TVET even as a career option? And what level of TVET are we talking about? Because it's so wide. So... Basically, cerita kepada kami semua, what's the pro and con lah? Kenapa kita patut mempertimbangkan TVET even as a career pathway in the beginning? Yeah, Especially I, I, since we're not certain and our family is also uncertain. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll probably add to that. Um, so, so there, TVET is so wide that, you know, yes, you're right that like TVET is, seems like the ones where, you know, you would jump into a particular sector within TVET because you are certain of your output, right? That you will get a job in Qasim or, you know, you want to be like a maritime engineer, you do like, you know, one of those TVET courses and stuff. But I, I would also say that TVET also gives you a chance to explore even if you're not sure. And the reason why I say that is because I think most of the crowd um, uh, that are here are predominantly of the younger age. And as you heard, you know, so our course is 12 months, Qasim Academy, 12 months. You will find a lot of TVET courses that are three months, six months, 12 months. These are one-year courses that can actually give you the foundations, the knowledge to actually then, should you venture into that area, you can, right? There is a placement. So if you think of like a degree per se, right? It's three years, you know? That's, that's three, you know, two, two years longer than what it would take, say, a TVET course would typically take. So I, I would say is that the beauty of TVET is that it gives you a chance to explore something that you are truly passionate about. So if you're passionate and if you, you know, I, I, I did not excel well in school. My, you know, surprisingly, actually, me and you came from the same school. Sekolah uh, Menengah Kebangsaan Taman Melawati, right? And, and, you know, we graduated from the same school and I didn't do very well uh, in my SPM and stuff. So for me, my pathway, selepas SPM, susah. Sebab SPM result tak bagus sangat. So, nak dapat scholarship, susah. Nak, nak ambil PTPTN and then thinking, oh, you know, later burden on me. So, decided to venture on my own path, right? To figure, what am I passionate about? Apa bidang yang saya memang suka sangat, right? And at that time, it was uh, dalam bidang membina website. So, dalam bidang design. So, that's where I was like, oh, okay, you know, ni mungkin ada potential, right? So, then started to pick up a one-year course on uh, membina website, right? That is scratch. So then ventured into that. And then part of that journey for me was like, while I was learning how to build website, I understand that the difficulty is actually the content of the website. So then I ventured into dalam bidang media. Untuk macam mana untuk membina content, untuk membuat content. Video ke, podcast ke, audio ke, writing ke, semua. So, then 11 years dalam bidang media, DBFM radio, right? And then lepas tu, I, you know, from there, it was like an idea was like, hey, you know, dalam sekarang kita dengar banyak pasal, you know, digital talent, um, tak banyak di, di Malaysia, actually di Southeast Asia pun tak banyak. So, how can then I be part of that community that can help build that next thing? So, it's all about passion, right? Kalau ada, ada interest, ada passion, 
there is so many options. Kasem is a very good example, a Malaysian example. But if you can see, dalam, even dalam bidang uh, in, in Facebook, right? Facebook, banyak uh, courses dalam digital marketing, uh, dalam social media marketing, LinkedIn pun sama. Yeah. Uh, and, and semua uh, courses, ye, whether it's online or physical, they add value to what you are doing. And that for me is, I feel, the beauty of, you know, all this extension of TVET. I don't like to use the word TVET because it's very traditional. It's very like, oh, TVET means, you know, I tak bagus dalam sekolah, I just bagus dalam, you know, my tangan. But it's actually no, right? Because dalam bidang-bidang ini, is creativity yang penting. Uh, Miss Awani, I notice you nak cakap. Ya, yeah, saya mungkin saya boleh tambah sikit lah apa yang uh, Encik Jeff sampaikan tadi. Ya, yes. uh, Ahmad... Uh... Menarik, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, that the terms yang mengatakan the TVET is a very general one, okay, which is that kalau you ada degree ke, kalau you ada any, I mean, the formal education uh, in that the academic line, okay, which is that you masih lagi, maksudnya, uh, boleh kalau nak sit for the special program for the TVET. Okay, so, mungkin saya boleh sharing di sini lah, okay, uh, in the, the landscape of the education in Malaysia. Okay, kalau kita lihat, okay, di Malaysia kita ada framework by MQA. And then another thing that uh, inside of that the TVET, kita ada uh, framework on that the TVET lah. All we, uh, we call also as a CBT, competency based training. Okay. So sekarang ni saya melihat lah kepada uh, macam mana sokongan pihak uh, government juga ya eh, kepada uh, landscape of the education TVET. Okay. Di mana diperkenalkan juga. Okay. Uh, di mana uh, peluang untuk graduate daripada TVET untuk melanjutkan pelajaran secara seterusnya. Okay. Kalau sebelum ni kita dengar. TVET hanya sampai di LKM, level 5. Okay, seterusnya why, where, okay? So, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, peranan kepada Kopta. Okay, diperkenalkan Code of Practice untuk TVET. Okay, di mana daripada line uh, kemahiran ataupun uh, bermulanya daripada CJ Kemahiran Malaysia. Okay, dan seterusnya ke Diploma Kemahiran Malaysia dan boleh uh, diberi pilihan kepada graduate daripada TVET untuk meneruskan, okay, seterusnya. Uh, dan melanjutkan pendidikan uh, ke peringkat lebih tinggi lah, okay? Di mana boleh uh, direct uh, daripada DKM, okay? Terus ke academic line, okay? Which is menggunakan uh, MQA framework is valid, okay? In the previous, kalau tak silap saya in uh, 2014 and uh, below lah, okay? Uh, di mana uh, bila student menduduki peperiksaan PPL, okay? Pegawai pengesah dalaman okay this is one of that the apa kita panggil uh, kaedah penilaian dekat dalam uh, sistem JPK lah ataupun TVET uh, jadi hanya uh, kita beri kepada apa kita panggil uh, lulus atau tak lulus competent atau tak competent tapi sekarang dengan adanya okay COPTA okay code of practice untuk TVET uh, di mana diberi juga pengiraan dari segi CGPA tapi saya juga melihat okay daripada observation saya lah that one of the TVET actually is very solid one. Okay, because what? You are not only learning about the skill. But dalam uh, apa kita panggil um, uh, dasar pembelajaran TVET, ada juga diberi, okay, uh, kita panggil sebagai kemahiran isaniah. Okay, dan di Kasem Academy juga, okay, because saya nak kongsikan di sini juga lah. Di Kasem Academy, uh, in the 2021, this year, on the September, kita sudah mengorak langkah, okay? uh, agak cepat eh? mengorak langkah di mana Kasem Academy juga dibuka di Indonesia dan juga di Thailand. Okay? So kita lihat di sini betapa kuatnya okay? uh, pendidikan kemahiran. Bukan sahaja dari segi maksudnya dilihat uh, secara lokal di Malaysia tapi dia juga adalah dilihat uh, I mean, uh, uh, di negara jiran yang berdekatan dengan kita lah. Uh, so dasar daripada itu okay, macam mana that kita bangunkan program kemahiran di sana sebenarnya okay, kita juga uh, menggunakan okay, uh, panduan yang uh, mana kita panggil sebagai NOS ataupun National Occupation System Standard. Okay? Uh, di situ uh, kita lihat kepada macam mana kita bangunkan very dynamic program untuk custom academy di Thailand dan juga Indonesia. Okay? So kalau yang saya nak tekankan uh, di sini, di sebalik pembelajaran kemahiran iaitu core ataupun core program, kita juga ada serapkan okay, kemahiran isania ataupun kita panggil sebagai TVET elements. Okay? So rasanya okay. Encik Emet, ah, itulah yang saya boleh kongsi lah. Okay? Terima kasih Puan Sawani. So if I were to summarize lah eh, secara ringkas lah. Kenapa TVET in the both of your answers, Mr. Jeff and Encik Sawani. Really is about the cost factor. Kalau you fikir daripada segi beban bayaran, typically a TVET cost would be cheaper. If you talk about your results, that plays into a factor. But we will talk about the perception that only low performers 
masuk TVET lah lepas ini but effectively kalau your result is not as good there is still more opportunities uh, apa TVET line is also blurring from what I can understand from Cik Salwa where it is becoming academic and in fact it sounds like more universities are going down this route of making sure that their academic courses are practical di mana ada praktikalnya dalam the academic course itself and to be very frank it's more practical lah that is the last reason I can see kenapa TVET is better because you are actually learning the skills that you will use in your industry versus the theory base which takes much longer and this is where it's interesting what Mr. Jeff said just now Tuan Puan ironically although it's more certain what you're doing but it also gives you more time to explore because of the less time it takes to learn a particular skill so on that pivot on that on that particular note atas atas nota tersebut lah saya nak tanya lah what then is the best way if i am a new student how do i best position my tvet journey or my my approach to tvet education macam mana saya nak posisi diri saya jadi apa yang saya pilih dalam arena TVET because you've mentioned that there's so many things out there and you have to be a bit more certain although yes you can explore but how do I better position it uh, how do because I think Mr. Jeff you've rightly pointed out oh you are from a diploma background and you ended up in TVET and from there it was media and later on you were a head of a coding school whereas uh, Miss Awani your background is engineering degree if I'm not mistaken and then later on you pivot into education and then teaching TVET getting certified and later now where you are and Miss Nadia yourself in particular uh, shipping entering into education space and now policy so it really sounds like there is no one pathway what is the best way a new person should approach this situation if I had to give advice to someone who is uh, 15 or 17 years old right now kalau seorang um, masih remaja my advice would be use the opportunities the uh, resources available to you meaning go online go on youtube and uh, try to see if there's something that you're interested in sesuatu yang uh, anda dah uh, mungkin ada sedikit minat for you to explore a little bit more and then start to look at which are the co colleges that offer these programs and when you look at the niche colleges like Kasem, a small um, colleges yang memang fokus kepada uh, courses yang mereka dah ada rantaian dengan industri yang sangat ketat, they often have shorter courses also, mungkin tiga bulan. And some of these courses will be you will be able to do it with, um, let's say, with some funding from the government and things like that. So if you are just starting out and you don't know what to do, my biggest advice would be to go out there and look at the options first before you so really spend a little bit of time to ask yourself what are you interested in and then to uh, look at the resources available yeah i mean it's i i, I like these kind of questions because i always go back to the same answer which is passion equal your your interests uh you know what, what do you like to do um you know like how i explain you know when master time scholar i was so interested in dalam membina website buat website because everyone at that time you know this was tahun 2000 <laughs> atau 99 kan and at that time you know buat website it was like a big thing so for me i was like it's nice because i tak payah baca buku <laughs> because i suka sangat computer so i was like okay you know i nak belajar macam mana nak bina website but Throughout the years, you know, sampai sekarang, it still applies the same. My wife, for example, dia graduate dalam bidang physiotherapy. Tapi dia punya passion dalam uh, baking. You know, buat brownies, buat cookies and stuff. And dalam MCO time, you know, there were so many people that we know, home bakers, right? Everyone did it. So we decided then to like, let's take a course on Facebook's digital marketing. You know, it was a tiga minggu program. Untuk belajar macam mana nak buat marketing dalam guna Facebook, Instagram. And then lepas tu, I guna YouTube untuk belajar macam mana buat marketing dalam TikTok. Right? So, the beauty of it is that, just like what you mentioned, that there is so many options for you to learn. Gone are the days where you have to go to a college or a university and then duduk tiga tahun belajar, you know, benda tu. Sekarang, 
The times have moved so fast. The, the thing that we like to see is that in, you know, for example, like you mentioned about MQA and, and all, right? So the conventional education institutions like Sunway Education Group will still exist no matter, you know, how many years down the road. What we provide or what, you know, the other areas that TVET provides is an additional and a supplementary option for those who want to change and, and put yourselves out there. Yep. So bayangkan dalam, you know, kalau you masuk dalam bidang, say, mechanical engineering, let's say, you know, campur with your industry internship dalam enam bulan tu setahun, total you punya journey untuk belajar dalam conventional university agak-agak dalam lima tahun. Tetapi, bayangkan dia punya progress, say, iPhone, lima tahun lepas, beberapa, betapa bezanya benda yang kita orang guna setiap hari dan sekarang lah, lima tahun lepas. So, bayangkan lima tahun dari sekarang, macam mana benda tu akan berubah, kan? So, what we can do is to actually keep ourselves updated. Right? So, you know, pergi YouTube ke MDAC, ada, you know, beribu-beribu courses yang dia bagi, percuma. Micro-credentials. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, micro-credentials, you know. These are the things that I feel is has given us now for us to really benefit from this is you kena ada dia punya drive dia, dia punya passion kalau tak ada passion kalau nak juga orang swap you sendiri untuk you know oh join zoom class ni ah ni dunia 10 ringgit kalau you join zoom class ni, you dapat 10 kalau if we keep doing these kind of things we will never change so for me is that everything has been there whether it's the government, whether it's the private sectors like Hassam and us in Sunway, we've, it's all there. It's all free. It's now it's up to you to actually show the passion and I will do this. Okay. So building on that, uh, Jeff, uh, what do you call this? Bagi saya lah, it sounds as though you're saying there's no one traditional path. Kita boleh take a lot of these short courses and this is where there are many today lah out there and it's really about whether you can do it or not. But to that question then, sebab ada banyak benda di luar sana, how do we know which one is better or which one is the right one to take? Because again, this is a talk about marketability, keboleh pasaran, yang mana kita patut pilih? Because saya tak nak lah buat course on YouTube, <laughs> but then nobody recognizes me and I cannot get that as yeah. an additional 10% increment in my pay. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good question and that's what, you know, we in 42 uh, Kuala Lumpur has been trying to push for because the world of learning is so open that you can even be learning while, you know, you're stuck in traffic jam, you could be learning because you could be like, you know, doing some online courses and stuff. So what we do is we structure it, but the way that we teach, we don't have teacher, 42 Kuala Lumpur tak ada, tak ada cikgu, <laughs> tak ada class, dan tak ada bayaran langsung. So, how we enable is, is like a innovation laboratory. Dalam, uh, you know, 42 Kuala Lumpur, kita uh, work with about uh, 20 uh, different industry partner, dari uh, banking, dari logistics, uh, you know. So, what we do is, kita tengok apa masalah-masalah inovasi yang syarikat-syarikat uh, ini ada yang kita boleh gunakan sebagai curriculum. So, kita you know, uh, have about 300 different projects yang students-students di 42 Kuala Lumpur can explore, right? So, imagine, you know, we hear about, uh, like, for example, I think a few years ago, we had Bank Negara Malaysia open a fintech sandbox untuk semua banking-banking untuk hantar uh, uh, orang punya staff untuk pergi ke, you know, sandbox environment. So, sandbox maksudnya, Ada satu tempat, physical, yang you boleh explore, yang tak ada barrier, yang you boleh try, right? Tetapi masalah dalam you know, sandbox sandbox ini is these companies kena hantar orang diorang yang sendiri yang actually ada day-to-day -day job, right? And then they have to send these people into this sandbox environment, so it loses time. So what we do is give it to the people, you know, people want to learn. There are, in, you know, plenty of people, who, you know, we've got... Our younger student is 18 tahun. Uh, ada juga, you know, budak-budak da uh, yang dari 42 KL yang tiada SPM, um, homeschool, right? And then uh, yang paling tua dekat 42 KL is 49 tahun, semi retired, ada dua anak. Tetapi semua dari 18 tahun sampai 49 tahun, 
Mereka semua ada satu objektif yang mereka passion untuk belajar apa yang industri sedang um, you know facing what problems they are facing at the moment. So we give them that opportunity, yeah. and then we they have a mentor, they are guided, you know. So everything in in dalam one year you would learn about the logistics sector, you would learn about the banking sector, you know. So these are the areas that we feel when you come out. You can choose to join a banking company if you want to, or you just be like, at least I know, you know, what it's all about, and it is certified from the Sunway Education Group. We are pushing for where the government, where MQA and stuff, to actually acknowledge that, yeah, learning without teacher is also a form of learning because right now that's not happening. Yeah. Okay. okay so yeah. Maybe I can. 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 42 KL, okay, actually on the side of kerajaan, okay, on the side of the institution, private, public, okay, actually we already give a very good platform, support. Macam uh, in that the institution of the 42 KL, free program, no lecturer, no classes, no timetable, again, this is very nice one, support untuk anda semua yang ada dekat sini mungkin lah ya, uh, untuk anak-anak encik yang, uh, encik dan puan-puan yang ada dekat sini lah. So same goes to Kasem Academy juga sebenarnya. Okay, program kita actually uh, di bawah pembiayaan Kasem Senjan Berhad itu sendiri. Okay, maksudnya we are subsidize the program. Okay, which is as instead you uh, student uh, ataupun kita punya pelatih membayar yuran. Tetapi ia dibiayai oleh Kasem Senjan Berhad itu sendiri. Okay, dengan penawaran kontrak kerja selama 2 tahun sahaja. Uh, maksudnya within that 2 years uh, akan terikat dengan Kasem lah untuk bekerja dengan Kasem. So, That the uh, apa kita panggil that the latihan itu adalah subsidi free, okay? Boleh katakan free lah, okay? And then job placement is 100% confirm. And then apa lagi yang kita cari, ya, yeah, okay? Kan betul tak cik? So itu yang kita tengok lah. So ya yeah, ber berbalik balik kepada soalan asas daripada Encik Amir tadi lah. Okay, macam mana kita nak hala tujukan? Apa bidang yang, yang uh, kita nak pilih? Ya, yeah, actually saya sangat bersetuju dengan Cik Jeff. Ya, yeah, kembali kepada passion kita, minat kita, apa? Okay, tapi ya mungkin ibu bapa lah, okay, as uh, apa kita panggil the first lah, touch ataupun guidance, okay, untuk anak-anak lah, okay, untuk memilih uh, mungkin uh, skill yang sangat-sangat uh, uh, spesifik lah, okay, uh, seperti contoh lah yang kita orang, uh, I mean di uh, kasam yang saya tengok lah, actually we are number one yang offer program vehicle inspector. Okay, maksudnya inspek kenderaan, menilai, menentu sahkan nilai kenderaan uh, second hand ataupun apa namanya tu uh, keda, uh, kenderaan uh, yang terpakai lah. Okay, uh, di mana uh, dilatih untuk memeriksa kenderaan dan juga menilai lah tentu harga lah. Okay, so this is the number one lah actually in in uh, Malaysia selain daripada Puspakom lah yang buat uh, this kind of uh, the program. And, and, and just okay. to add on like you know I think just hearing from that. I I'm interested to learn like to how to inspect cars, you know, because you know we we've, we've had this I experience before. I'm sure everyone has this where kita orang pergi beli kereta second hand, and then selalu kita kena bawa mechanic bawa you know like eh hey, tolong check, but I tak tahu nak check. But now there is an option for me to actually even go and learn, so that at least it's a skill. But what I do with it comes down to you, right? Do I want to then maybe you know start like a small inspection center where I then train others, you know, with Kasem? Or do I want to work with Kasem? The option is there. It's just we need to be creative with what we what skills we have. It doesn't mean that you know if oh if I go to vet, the perception is that means I didn't do well in school. No, because. There are so many people who didn't do well in school, but yet we celebrate them. Mark Zuckerberg, for example, you know, we keep wow, you know, he's amazing, but he's you know a college dropout, didn't do well in school. Steve Jobs, college dropout, didn't do well in school. Actually, fun fact, even Eric, who is the CEO and the founder of Kasem, he was a college dropout from Sunway, you know. So, you know, yet when 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 these individuals they drop out from college or they drop out from school. And when they become someone, is when we celebrate them. So why it, 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 is it that 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 perception like oh you know if you drop out of school like oh you didn't do well in SPM, ah uh, habis lah right? It's not because maybe they are passionate or they're fasi dalam bidang lain. So how can we enable that? Yeah. Right. You know even even like you know um dalam bidang like cooking you know uh even like you know skills like dancing for example you know. 
how do you, you know, if, if, you know, we've got some of the best dancers in the world, like globally, who never graduated from any schools. Because, you know, if you look at it in SPM, is there a course on dancing? No, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's just, we need to change that perception. Yeah. It's an opportunity to do well. TVET is a beautiful space right now because it is solving industry's challenge. We talk about Industry 4.0 and all that, right? The crux of it, the core of it, is actually coming down to needing more people to come from TVET, from STEM. It's a variation of all these things combined together. Yep. So building on that, Jeff, basically, uh, if I were to summarize, lah, secara ringkasnya, lah, it really, there is no real one pathway, even if you're taking TVET skills or courses, or even if you started out in a traditional degree, you might still end up in TVET later on. Because I think the, the reality of the matter is, pada zaman sekarang, it's about kemahiran, bukan about uh, what paper you have on the wall, but rather what you can do. So if you're really sitting down and tengah fikir, apa yang patut saya pertimbangkan untuk the right TVET course? I would assume that you're talking more about your passion, as you said right now. Apa kemahiran you nak belajar? And I think more importantly, when you're actually choosing the school, building on what Nadia said just now, uh, adakah dia mempunyai network industry yang kuat? A structured curriculum? Uh, do they offer opportunities later on like Qasem for you to then expand yourself? So these are some of the things you can think about. But I want to address one last question before we open for Q&A. Because we've mentioned it a couple of times. And I think kita sebagai uh, apa, rakyat Asia memang tak akan lari. From an Asian culture, we will not run away from this. Our parents' blessing and our parents' perception of what TVET is, is very different. I think they still maintain that, oh, TVET, apa ni? Oh, you must automotive, you jadi car inspector. What is this compared to a lawyer? You know? So, how is the better way for somebody starting out to justify this? Because one thing I also realize hearing you speak, Jeff and Sawani and Nadia, I feel like TVET is not the be all or end all. You could potentially be doing a traditional degree and be taking short TVET courses as well. Yep. Or you could be doing a main TVET course and still expanding on related courses that is not related. Say you're doing automotive. You could also at the same time be studying business management. You could also be studying soft skill, team team competencies, which is what Nadia mentioned in the very beginning, apa yang majikan mencari. So, there are many of these pathways. And we seem to understand that that is the reality pada hari ini dalam zaman yang bertukar-tukar. Tetapi, macam mana nak layan persepsi ibu bapa ni? How do we, how do we navigate this? Um, okay, so I... I can give a real story here because for for 42 KL, kita orang tak bagi like a paper certificate. Um, then you know that check out you are the degree or diploma dari 42 Kuala Lumpur. There's there's none. Um, 42 yang asal dari France uh, in uh, 2013 uh, sampai sekarang dah, dah ada dalam 33 campus uh, di seluruh dunia. Uh, 42 Kuala Lumpur is the pertama dalam Southeast Asia and dia punya uh, I guess the the principle of 42 uh, di mana-mana campus di seluruh dunia ada tiga. Satu, dia kena percuma. Tak boleh mana-mana uh, campus yang suruh uh, pelajar untuk bayar uh, dia punya curriculum. So, mana-mana campus di 42 uh, 42 dunia Malaysia ada 42 Kuala Lumpur, percuma. Nombor dua, dia uh, kena uh, open untuk semua. Tak kisah dia punya qualification. Whether for us in Malaysia, whether you got SPM or no SPM, tak kisah. And number tiga is, tak boleh ada macam certificate. Sebab kita kena ubah perception yang certificate adalah Satu yang, like, I guess, you know, uh, iktiraf yang, okay, you know, I've, I've, I've exceeded on this, right? Because, kita, kalau kita tengok company uh, Google, uh, Facebook, uh, even di Malaysia, uh, Lazada, Shopee, Qasem, uh, we've had a lot of conversations with them, and we asked them, when you hire a new talent, 
what are the criteria that you look at? And certificate is always one of the bottom of the list. And this is coming from the technology officers that we speak to. Even in our partners in the banks, like, you know, we've got, same like Custom Academy, where if you do 42KL and you've completed the 12, year, uh, 12 months course, you have an option to choose to work with Custom, to choose to work with CIMB Bank, with Standard Charter, with HSBC, with DHL. There are so many companies that we work with. And all of them say that, you know what, Jeff? You are right. We don't actually look at certificates anymore. What we look at is the skills and are you able to solve the problem. So generally, when you apply for these jobs, number one is, kalau you tengok, kalau you pergi uh, online or you pergi Shopee or Lazada, you tengok dia punya job, the first test dia orang selalu buat is, you kena buat logic test. You kena ada online test, right? Dia tengok you punya... Uh, minda, you boleh, uh, there's like, typically there's like a memory test, so dia macam main game sikit, and then there is a logic application test. Selepas itu, baru you ada interview dengan dia punya uh, head of department, the HR. And then you ada interview dengan dia punya digital officer, kan? So, very rarely, you will actually see certificate is being something that is required. Yes, of course, kalau dalam bidang doctor, you know, dalam bidang law, of course. But we're not talking about those sectors. What we're talking is the digital sector does not have to have a degree. And that perception just has to come with it. We had, stu we had students who, parents, they brought their parents over and, you know, I spoke to so many parents and explaining why we don't want to provide a certificate. We can, but ideally we should not because we have you know, 20 different partners that work with 42KL who mm -hmm. all agree that if you graduate from 42KL, you don't even need to show your certificate anymore. Okay, interesting. Uh, anyone else want to respond to that? Talking about that, right, when we, when we talk about um, convincing your parents, actually, it's very similar to convincing an employer. So in the sense that if you have right now or in the past, you always look at a certificate as the passport, the passport to get you into the job interview, right? But uh, given the resources that we have right now, LinkedIn, portfolios that you can put online, so it's, you are able to build a presence without having a certificate. So if someone gets your resume, they are able to look you up online and see, well, this is what this, this person has designed. This is some graphic design that they have done that is either on their LinkedIn um, or their Facebook or Instagram. So from there, that will be that legitimacy to get you the job, to get you the interview. So at the, bila kita cakap bagaimana kita nak uh, bincang dengan ibu bapa, I would say come with a little bit of um, preparation. Come with a little bit of preparation to show your parents, this is the thing that I have graphically designed. I would like you to see. I do not want to, you know, and I think the other thing that we haven't really talked about today is that with TVET skills, skills, kemahiran, kemahiran TVET, a lot of it, we can join the gig economy where we can work from anywhere, that we can, we can have that flexibility. And I think the, the younger people now, what they are looking for as their life goals are a little bit different than their parents. So to be able to have that conversation, to explain to them, like, our goals are to have a flexible life where... You know, so that's something that I think um, we can try to approach okay. when speaking to the parents. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, per, so if I were to assume that's how I okay, and I, I, if I were to maybe see, summarize again, la, just, just to set it into context. La. I think ultimately, your parents is one thing. Ibu bapa anda, pandangan ibu bapa anda penting dan harus dipertimbangkan. Tetapi understand that in today's world, where things are moving so fast, things are changing every five years, their perspective and their point of views of what jobs are relevant might not be very relevant today. Lah. So you must do your own research a little bit, have that honest adult discussion, cakap yang saya dah baca, saya dah research. Employers have changed. They are now forcing you to go through tests. They don't care that you have a degree from UM. You still have to go through the logic test. I was, a, I was hiring for Shopee. I worked with Shopee. I led a team of about 40 people. And you're right, they're exactly right. We didn't care about the degree. 
we actually still gave them a case study to do. And people who pass the case study aja yang kita panggil. So the, the landscape dah bertukar adik-adik. So it's really about the skills that you have and what you know. So on that note, I'm going to open the floor for Q&A if there are any. Uh, boleh dipersilakan sesiapa yang nak tanya apa-apa soalan. I think it's been a very interesting panel today. And I think it's been a very honest panel also lah daripada segi apa yang sedang berlaku dalam landscape TVET di Malaysia lah. So I welcome any questions from the audience on how, on how, what you would like to know further lah from our distinguished panel. Ada? I think we have one question. All right, yeah. silakan. Hi, my name is Kelly. My question is, what is the Ministry of Education um, planning to do in terms of, you know, getting the message out? Like, you know, you, you should pursue whatever you are interested in in life instead of, instead of uh, following, you know, your parents' um, aspiration. So are there anything that the Ministry of Education is doing in terms of um, changing the landscape of um, our children's, you know, future? Uh, yeah, so I, I will probably take that, but I can't answer on behalf of the Ministry of Education. If there's someone here from the Ministry of Education, it would be good for them to speak up. But also it would be good for, them to, for, me, for me to like, speak to them. Um, but I can tell you from the conversations that we've had, we are at an early stage of trying to make this change. Uh, 42 is very, very, very different. And to get, to get a ministry uh, to acknowledge um, how 42 can actually give back to the industry and how it's relevant takes time. And what we plan to do on our own while we have continuous discussions with you know not just ministry of uh, education uh, higher education but also with like you know hrd corp uh, you know we're, we're speaking to uh, the ministry of uh, uh, skills and development uh, there's so many different areas that we're talking we even spoke to like mqa we're talking about you know nos degrees and these kind of different programs but all of them have you know said that they like the concept of having a peer-to-peer -peer learning system, having a free uh, education platform that uses industry challenges as a curriculum. It is all truly well and great. However, there are things that have been set in stone uh, in the law itself that doesn't actually encourage us um, you know, or, or enable us to actually grow uh, even further. And these are things like the definition of what a, a learning institution is. And, and for us, we don't fit in that definition because the current uh, you know, law from my understanding is that it must have a teacher. A teacher, is, and the definition of a teacher is someone who is teaching in a classroom. Now, for 42, we don't have a teacher. You learn on your own and you share the knowledge with another person. One day you could be a teacher the other day, you could be a student because that is just how in the industry you are. You know, you learn and you grow as you know you go in your career. So, what we plan to do and what we, I guess, our 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 vision is to help build that or or change that that I guess um, uh, roadblocks or, or or to break through that that roadblocks. And by doing so, what we we can do is that you know currently we've got 120 students in our course. Out of the 4,000 people that have applied at 42KL. So why is there such a huge number? Like from 4,000 people who apply on our website, you only have 120 students. What happened? The what happened is they go through the tests, they go through the, the, the boot camps, and then we provide actually free education, right? So we can't, you know, have, okay, 4,000 people, we will pay for all of you. But then you drop out. After two, three days, you're like, Jeff, I quit. Or after two, three months, Jeff, I quit. We can't do that. So you have to actually show the investment. Now, these 120 students will be graduating starting April next year. April next year, we will be observing where do they go. You know, there are companies like Kasim that has already had conversation. I think about two weeks ago, they came into our campus and uh, Eric, who's the founder, he was saying, Jeff, 
you know, my, my digital seats, I, they're looking at hiring, you know, a few hundred digital uh, talents in the next five years to, to achieve that unicorn status across Southeast Asia. The doors are always open. So we've got, you know, CIMB, Standard Charter, HSBC, DHL, all these companies came up to me and said, yeah, whenever your, your talents are ready, I'm going to put them into the, the jobs immediately, right? So what we will do is we will show that despite all the, I guess, restrictions that we've had, we can still find Malaysians who are passionate, who are dedicated, go through 12 months of a peer-to-peer -peer learning environment where it's explorative, it's solving industry problems, and then potentially work in these companies and maybe in two or three years down the road, they could be CTOs, Chief Technology Officer, like a digital lead. And then we will continue to, I, I, you know, from now in the next two, three years, we will have discussions with the ministry continuously. And once there is that change, there is that impact, and the private sector acknowledges that, yes, it is a, a revolutionary case. Bear in mind, 42KL is yeah. the first in Southeast Asia. So we could actually then say, let's make a mark. Let's make a change and be someone where, for the first time in Southeast Asia, in the education space, Malaysia is leading the way. And we're helping to build that. It yeah. takes time. Nadia, is the, you, have you guys come across anything with regards to government efforts? Hey. Um, yes? Yes, thing. Okay, Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. I agree with Jeff in the sense that um, the idea of um, this kind of disruptive education is at its infancy in Malaysia. But at the same time, the idea is already there. It's already planted. So right now, it's, um, uh, it's a combination of the efforts from, from small and medium-sized uh, institutions that are kind of pushing the, the, the thought that, you know, education, we can reimagine it. So, is that idea there? Yes, and but do we have a long way to go? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just building on this, because unfortunately, ma'am, we don't have anybody from the yeah. government on the panel. But from the conversations that I was privy to, maybe about seven or eight years ago, there was already these discussions about how do we change our education systems to give some of the skills that they're talking about, that adaptability aspect. But I think the always the pushback is how would public react to it. So I think it's a chicken and egg situation. I think it's a situation that everybody sort of realizes yang kita kena menghala ke sana, tetapi bagaimana kita nak buat secara bersama. Yeah. Already, I think TVET allocation under RMK12 is in the billions. Uh, there's already quite a number of initiatives like to remove testing even under Ministry of Education. But again, a lot of flag and pushback also from public. So again, all of these things are interrelated when you talk about the TVET landscape as a whole, lah, if we're talking from a policy perspective. Yeah, so, so to, to add on that, just very quickly, it's, it's actually very true, right? So the discussions have been ongoing. It's not like, you know, they're like, no, this is not, it, it has been ongoing. But from, a, if, you know, I, I would assume that, you know, from a ministry, if they were to actually do something, it has to have use cases. So what we are doing is we're building the use cases for them. Right, so you know, hopefully we will see a change. I'm, I'm very certain we will see. Any other questions from the floor? Hello, hi. Uh, I find it interesting when you mention about uh, there's no, I mean, it's, there's no one traditional way of, as in, like before this, we have to stick in a course for like three years or four years, of course, and then end up probably people are not. Uh, used them I and not liking or what they are studying and not server because because <coughs> I'm also a computer science graduate and prior to my degree I have no knowledge of coding at all so my first assignments is quite short because there are students who can complete a two weeks of uh, coding assignment in two or three days and I feel like I'm still stuck in one week <laughs> so that kind of thing is so my question is, uh, my question leads to like, how would you advise like students or even graduates of uh, recent graduates who have this sort of feelings that uh, they just follow the courses like or their sponsorship to these specific courses and then uh, middle of the in the middle of their study they'll be like, oh, this is not what I'm, I don't, don't think I'm good at this. I don't think this is my uh, kind of work that I want to do. So what what can you advise on the students or even graduates nowadays in 
and let's share some of the TVET's point of view as well in this current matter. Right. Cool. Well, thanks. Uh, so you, you graduated from computer science, is that right? Yeah, uh, three year three year degree. Uh, University of Leeds. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And, and right now you're doing nothing with uh, computer science. I kind of I don't really do a lot of coding, but yeah. I'm just more on towards the technical part, like business process flow, uh, architecture side of the wireframing, yeah. and uh, pretty simple coding as in CSS, HTML, which yeah. is website development. Development. So but, it's on the easiest easier yeah. side of uh, coding itself compared to like what I've learned. Cryptography, uh, software but, engineering. But but it, it definitely has helped you to yeah. be in this position that you are. And you yeah. know, so you're right, right? So, I mean, and that's a very valid question because generally you will find uh, uh, individuals who have already invested the three-year course or, you know, five-year course and then, you know, doing their... Uh, you know, their, their four plus one or three plus twos and all that kind of stuff, right? So, and then halfway through they realize... This is not for me, right? Uh, and it's very, it's very sad to see that you know uh, you will find a lot of students um, that 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 go through the same path, and then they they feel like you know once they've graduated from a computer science degree, and then they realize like you know I don't want to be a full stack engineer. I actually just want to do something completely different, and then they realize I've wasted. But my my answer my answer to that is actually you did not waste, right? Because what you have is something that actually very few people have actually had the opportunity or succeeded in. But what you are doing is to find a niche or find an area that you can still excel in because there are certain areas in the field of computer science that you do not like. And that is you know, something that we are trying to change. So in 42KL, unlike, say, a conventional uh, computer science faculty, and we, we work very closely with Sunway University because we're part of the Sunway Education Group. So, you know, when we look at their university structure, when you sign up the course, even before you start your projects, you have to choose what is your major and what is your minor, right? And imagine halfway through, you realize like, hey, you know what, cybersecurity I'm, it's not for me. You have to actually then wait for the next intake, and chances are you have to pay more money because you're switching your major to something else now. How about just give them the opportunity to try it out first? So that's what 42 does. We've got 300 over different projects. Students can one day, they can come in, okay, today I want to learn some you know, uh, areas of uh, cybersecurity. So they start working on some cybersecurity project. If tomorrow they wake up and they're like, yeah, cybersecurity not for me. I think I like AI. Then go on AI. At the end of the day, each project that you complete, it's like a game. Each project you complete, you get an, a number of experience points. Once you reach the certain number of experience points, that means you are ready to go for the industry. So it's you're building your own character. Uh, like we talk about the metaverse and stuff, right? So in a way, it's building your own character. And then what you have done is just manually in your mind. Like, I learn about this. I actually can apply some of my basic principles into these areas and grow those, those areas as well, right? So... Yeah, I mean, you know, the, don't feel like, oh, you know, like I'm not good enough and all because I, I can tell you that the thousands of people here would love to be in that position where they have actually graduated in computer science and have some knowledge. So, yeah, give yourself a pat on your back because it's not easy. I know it's not easy. But, yeah. I would like to add also, I think your career is something that spans 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. And sometimes you look back and you think, well, maybe this is not something that um, like is very useful now, but later on, it's uh, something that could, uh, could, could be really useful. I'll give you an example. When I started my, my degree, I, I thought that, I would, well, my family wanted me to do finance or marketing. Mm -hmm. So that's what um, I started off my degree. And halfway through, I realized there's no way that I wanted to do this, you know? And I, I switched um, halfway through. And to give you that advice to any young people who are thinking that maybe this is not the cause for me, speak to the advisors in your university or in your college. There's usually someone who will be able to help you there. And I, I managed to graduate in time with a supply chain degree then. And, uh, but later on, maybe now 15 years later, I do find that some of my marketing knowledge is, has come in quite useful. It's coming quite handy, so you never know. I don't think that there's anything that you will learn and then you will regret it later on. 
So, um, but the, if you feel like what you have learned is not enough to join the, 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 or the industry that you would like, then identify those gaps and try to fill them. Yeah. Yeah. If you can fill them in, very, like, um, in, in a very structured way, that's great. But if you can't, you can always uh, learn stuff on YouTube, LinkedIn Learning. And when you reach the, when you reach the interview stage, don't be afraid to say, you know what, I, I have a customer service experience or I do know how to do uh, a little bit of coding in this way or something like that. Yeah. All right. I think, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've come to basically the end of our session. Um, time is up. But maybe before we completely end, I would just like to give maybe 30 seconds to each panelist to sort of give your last parting words. Uh, any last advice for job seekers out there when it comes to the TVET space? Uh, who would like to go first? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Encik uh, Ame. Yeah, untuk Encik uh, Encik dan tuan-tuan yang ada kat sini lah. Okay. So, yeah, actually, yeah, kita cubalah untuk alih kita punya, apa kita panggil, uh, pemikiran kita yang sebelum ni, okay. Perception kita terhadap TVET education, okay. Yang di mana sebelum ni mungkin kita berfikiran ini adalah second uh, 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 apa kita panggil uh, pilihan yang kedua atau per second chance okey after uh, kita uh, apa kita panggil uh, menghabiskan uh, sesi persekolahan lah ataupun uh, tanggapan uh, minda masyarakat okey this is that the uh, very uh, lower punya entry uh, yang dia orang boleh enter after sekolah habis lah okey jadi kita cuba change uh, that the mentality mungkin ini adalah satu laluan uh, profession yang sangat baik okey which is that specific skill ataupun task yang sangat special Okey contohlah saya uh, maklumkan dekat sini bukan semua orang uh, mahir okey untuk menghasilkan uh, sesuatu masakan yang sangat baik ataupun bukan semua orang uh, boleh uh, mendandan uh, rambut eh contoh eh because this is a very special skill so perspektif itu yang kita kena tukar sekarang ni okey dan kita tengok juga sebenarnya uh, kemahiran-kemahiran tertentu ni sebenarnya dia akan go for the very high range of the learn, uh, uh, high range of the earning okey salary yang akan I mean sangat tinggi okey contohnya special welder okey because welder yang buat uh, GI punya welder untuk petroleum ya yeah. The salary is very, yeah, very superb actually, okay. So this is the thing yang mungkin kita boleh cuba tukarlah di mana uh, bukan sahaja program akademi yang memberi masa depan yang sangat baik. Sebenarnya sekarang ni in the trends kemahiran itu yang boleh, I mean, yang juga boleh memberi uh, satu masa depan yang uh, 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 lebih baik lah, okay. Saya faham, okay, keadaan sekarang, okay, we go for the gig economy, okay. Remaja mungkin lebih suka untuk jadi YouTuber, okay. Uh, ataupun mungkin, ya, yeah, something yang very... Uh, Uh, trending okay but uh, kita tak boleh uh, maksudnya uh, terus uh, berfikiran begitulah okay which is that mungkin di samping uh, daripada uh, trend trending yang sekarang ni mungkin kita boleh selitkanlah juga kemahiran uh, yang di mana mungkin memang akan membantu dan juga penting untuk pada masa uh, hadapan nanti okay? Alright, thank you Jack Sawani Jeff your 30 second uh, so i kind of forgot what was the question but uh -huh. i will just say that you know for 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 anyone who's here uh, just i guess you know just The, the step is already like your first step is done because you are definitely you're here because you're interested you want to find out more so now is my my you know basically parting words would be if you're interested in computer science but you're not sure can i actually do coding i don't have you know good mathematical grades in high school and stuff and all uh, i don't know if i'll do it try 42KL is free just go on to the website it's 4242 the number 4 number 2 kl.edu.my try login uh, untuk register tak sampai 2 minit macam register Facebook account cuba game dia kalau pass maksudnya you ada foundations untuk belajar coding and then pergi the next step datang untuk bootcamp kalau pass bootcamp datang untuk the 12 months program kalau pass the 12 months program can pergi in the industry so try the little steps that you do is actually going to change your future so yeah thanks for that jeff nadia any la your mm, last 30 my seconds my advice for a young job seekers is to not to uh, underestimate the the soft skills the digital skills a uh, collaboration being able to think creatively complex problem solving so try to keep on working on those communication skills you know uh, your body language that that does go a long way when it comes to being employed and kind of moving in your career too 
All right. Thank you very much. With that, tuan-puan, kami telah sampai ke akhir sesi kami. Saya nak ucapkan terima kasih kepada para panelis kita, kepada organizer kami, Pekeso, kerana memberi kami peluang untuk bertutur dalam topik yang sangat relevant pada zaman sekarang ini. Dan we hope that you have found this session useful. And thank you very much. And with that, uh, have a good day.